You are listening to the Headhunting Housewives podcast with your recruiter, Diane O'Brien, episode number 76. Hey, everybody, this is Diane O'Brien, your Headhunting Housewife. So as you know, I am new to podcasting, but the one thing that has made this super simple for me is this app called Anchor. (laughs) So if you're wondering how to start a podcast, because that's what I Googled, how do I start a podcast? I thought to buy all this equipment, or I saw lots of YouTubes and all these things you had to get first. But luckily, I found Anchor, and I put the app on my phone, and it was easy, and I started recording. So, uh, so far, so good, and we'll let you all know how to do that as well. Good luck. Hello, housewives. I hope everyone is doing great and excited to get started here in September. Labor Day is over, ladies. So hopefully the kids are back in school. This is Tuesday um, and summer's officially over and we're getting back to the swing of things to start start something new, hopefully, for many of you or just get back to what you were doing. Um, I put a quick podcast out last week just to give a little prelude that we're getting ready to get started, kind of get your engines ready. Um, if you feel stuck and not sure what you want to do, to help you maybe get unstuck here in September. If you want to be a virtual recruiter, come join us for the ride because the next few months, I would say 10 weeks, but from now to Thanksgiving, we're going to go week by week and you can become a recruiter if you want to, a virtual recruiter, if you want to be a sourcer, a recruiter, a business owner, right? Hopefully if it's a business owner for recruiting, that's more my forte where I'll be able to help you. But the support that we offer, I think you women as we kind of come together for whatever business you're thinking about starting, sometimes a lot of the tools you use and ideas and the kind of support inspiration part, especially in guidance of going through getting a business up and going, isn't very different, whether it's for recruiting or uh, many other small businesses from home, especially if you're a work from home mom, right, that's trying to get your own business going. But um, so, you know, feel free to come with the support. All that kind of support is free. And the ladies, I think, love to help each other, which I love. Um, But I want today's podcast to focus a little bit on those of you that really want to get into, um, you know, the recruiting side or the sourcing side or being a business owner of the recruiting business. Because again, that's where I can really dig deep with you. And um, I want to do another, I've done this in the past where I have these little private podcasts that I'll do weekly um, separate from this public one just to get more in the deeper nitty gritty of things, but still offer the free information versus you, you know, joining a mentorship program or working one-on-one or with a team. And so I think, you know, I want to hear from all of you that have been listening to the podcast that maybe you never reached out. But if you're one of those that are thinking, well, should I become a virtual recruiter? Should I become a sourcer? Should I start, you know, my at-home business? Um, you know, I, I want to learn more of this headhunting world. I want to hear from you because I want to tailor this each year a little more specific um, to what you women and men, your men are more than welcome as well, but uh, especially you women are usually not as out there and asking for what you want or trying to figure out what you want and going for it. So that's where I want to lend a lot of support and guidance. Um, and, you know, I think a big part of it, especially, you know, after you've had the summer to think about things and now September will be rolling into the fall. Um, you know, there's a lot of time for kind of after that reflection of the past couple months or whatever, or time at the beach, um, you need to make a decision, right? It's like, okay, for, for me, a lot of times I already decide, or right, I'm going to, and I have that same question in my mind sometimes, like, am I going to go back to recruiting? Should I just focus on real estate investing? Should I do something different? You know, um, recruiting always ends up kind of pulling me back. It's just where I make the most money in the bank for my buck, as well as have the most fun in helping not just you housewives, but women in the corporate world. Um, Last year was so fun. I focused on the women CEOs out there or the ones that were like in ops that want to become COO and getting them to the finish line, getting them more money and helping give them the confidence they needed to interview stronger and get that job, right? So um, for you ladies out there that are, you know, already in corporate America and need that help and push to get the next step, um, again, I want to hear, I love hearing from everyone, but but specifically you housewives, I feel like sometimes all of you after raising kids for a while, you can feel like you're in a little bit of a cave where you just kind of stepped your foot out when it comes comes into the community and volunteerism and you're working at your kids' schools, but it's okay to want to go out in the world and make some money, ladies, right? And so um, if that's what you're thinking, and if you're drawn to me for some reason, I'm thinking you might be guessing recruiting or sourcing or recruiting business, maybe for you, now is the time to reach out to us at hello at headhuntinghousewives.com. We do read all your emails and um, to figure out what you're thinking, what you're needing, if you need to have a set up a conversation 
you know, to see where you want to take the next step, get on a call. Um, we kind of try to take care of everyone at a different, um, kind of what, what best suits you, right? And so, again, I'll put some private podcasts. If you have questions, email me that. Um, because there are so many different facets of recruiting where if you only want to be a source or if you want to work from home and you love the research side, right? You want to, you know, once you have a project and, and you know what the job entails, if let's say we're looking for a CEO for a software company in, let's say, you know, Detroit, Michigan, or New York City, or wherever, once you have all that criteria, if you're someone that wants to dig in as a research and find, once we teach you how to do that, and it's not that hard, especially nowadays with how far the internet's come between the Indeed and LinkedIn's and um, some of the paid LinkedIn recruiters that we use and can share, you can really get in there and, and source and find you know the right people. And that might be where you want to stop. You might want to be an awesome sourcer. You, know, you source the people, you build that candidate list and you're able to pass that along to then the recruiters, right? Now, you might say, well, that, I'm not so much into research, but I like talking to people on the phone. So that was always a little bit more me. I did the sourcing too, but you know, I like talking to people on the phone and interviewing them. But a lot of you might think, oh, I would love this to talk to people and interview them on the phone, but I wouldn't know what to ask, right? So again, all of that, the interview questions, we've all, we've done that. You know, we perfected that through the years. And surprisingly enough, they're not that different you know, for the different industries. So, you know, of course you can get very specific if you want to recruit. I do recommend, especially starting out, you have a good little niche. Like I've kind of expanded in in odd ways, I think, typical for the market. Most people, you need a really strong little niche where for me with this whole COO and CEO thing I'm doing and working with EOS um, and some new partnerships, I'm kind of way more all over the map than I ever thought I would be. I don't know if I necessarily would recommend someone starting out. I did have a niche when I started. Um, and I do, you know, in fact, lose some business but that may speak to me when I'm not specialized in just one market. Um, but the ones that believe in me, they know that I can find someone in any market because that's I'm good at finding the person and attracting them. It doesn't matter what industry. And it's, um, you know, and, and when you have ties in different industries, at least within there, it, it's super helpful and doesn't hurt you. Um, but again, that's a little bit of me, I think, explain that to, to a, a person that was already referred to me. So I already have a little bit of clout there where if you're brand new starting out, get a little niche and it might be what you were interested in before you were stay at home, right? Maybe, or you could be working in corporate right now and, and think it, or are thinking about becoming a recruiter. I had um, some people reach out from like engineer background, you know, or um, something that just wasn't typical recruiting that asked, would that be good? Could they get started? How do they get started? So recruiting is great because any background that you were in, every industry hires, right? So you could all of a sudden stop being an engineer or whatever company you're working for, but decide you want to help them hire engineers like yourself. Um, and that's a nice segue in. In fact, that wasn't too far off from how I got my start when I was a sales girl in the healthcare market. Um, um, I was repping for GE and I was actually out there selling software for the MRI and CT and kind of big equipment, capital equipment in hospitals. And so when I started recruiting, I would start hiring those kind of six-figure sales reps for the for the um, big healthcare companies like GE, Siemens, and Philips and all that kind of stuff. So it was an easy segue because I really knew the job. So I was in that deep niche of truly understanding the market and the job. So I could explain it really well. I could attract people really well. Um, and to close those deals. So that is very, very helpful if you're new. And that's how you would get started, right? We would actually help you um, find job orders right in that niche. So when I talk about let's start sourcing in September, remember, it's not just sourcing of the candidates because, you know, if you're working some of my jobs, that's fine. I can give you a job order and you can start sourcing candidates right away and start to learn, you know, and practice how to be a sourcer or the, or the interviewer, you know, or closing on a contract. But if you want to do it yourself or start your own business in your own industry, that's something where I can then walk you through and teach you, okay, well, how do you get your first job order? So you'll be sourcing your client before you even start sourcing candidates, right? And that takes some time. And that's why you kind of want to walk through a 10-week or almost three-month, you know, kind of course mentorship with us because it takes time. It's a week-to-week practice to close a deal. Even a contract terms, if you're going to be in that business ownership side, can take almost a month at times to close. Now, other ones are really fast and people will sign within, you know, days or the uh, first week. But often it can take, you know, especially the higher end retained stuff can take a month to close the terms and contracts. So, um, but we got your back on all of that. I mean, I have standard contracts I use. Of course, they've changed a lot in the past 20 years. So I had a very standard one page and then I got, you know, there were some that the lawyers got involved on my client side and I had to use their contract and that became like a three or four pager. And then I try to always go back to the simplest. So, 
Um, but anyway, my point is I've had contracts in many, many industries. I mean, all the clean technologies, um, healthcare, software, cannabis, EOS, <laughs> trying to think this as recently, you know. Um, so, and, and they're all the same again, across the industries, the terms for recruiting doesn't change. So it doesn't really even matter. It's really going to be the terms of the recruiting and the hiring. Um, but again, don't, if any of those things are stopping you, and this is where I think women get stuck, you start getting scared of, oh my God, well, I don't even know how to do a contract or I don't even know how to source client or source then the candidate or... When I go to interview people, how am I going to know how to interview them and come off confident? And, and that's all the stuff that I'm here to kind of be your personal mentor or advisee or advisor, or whatever you want to call it. In fact, I've had people I've trained before just literally say, I need to run this contract by my advisor or you know manager, whatever makes you comfortable so you don't feel alone when you're starting your business. That's kind of what keeps me passionate about this because it can be very lonely. I remember starting my business years ago and luckily I did have a good girlfriend that was in the biz as well that was a little bit there to hold my hand and I feel like that's just kind of me paying it back because if you're, you don't have that, that's kind of everything that someone can send you a quick contract template, right? Or maybe it's been a basic invoice template that you don't have or how do you, you know, are these terms fair or not? Where do you hold your ground? Where don't you? Um, you know, the little tricks of, again, um, the whole candidate side, how do you save a ton of time and sourcing candidates? And when do you outsource that job if you don't like that? And and so all these kinds of things, you know, that take time to learn. Of course, you can read a book on it, Work From Home Headhunter. You know, I put out years ago, I think it was called Your 10-Week Guide to Six-Figure Success, uh, Work From Home Headhunter. Um, that's on Amazon. So you can read kind of that's a very good general start. But when you're needing like, you know, you need real help and you need those templates and you need someone to support you or get on a group call with other ladies that so you don't feel alone, that's what Headhunting Housewives is here to do. So um, in being in September, like I said, figure out, you know, now's decision time. What part do we do all of it? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you just want to source and work for like one of my companies or another recruiting company? The nice thing is ladies, I have really good contacts with business, other business owners. So I have obviously a couple of recruiting companies I work through my sales source and I partner with Kaplan exec um, to run the CEO over that one where we do all the higher level, but I still love sales teams and healthcare. So I kept my old company. Um, so I have a couple nice, solid companies that you can work through and learn and practice. But if let's say you're in finance, I've, I have a great um, old business partner on the finance side. If you're just pure healthcare, I still have those contacts, recruiting companies of people I've worked with and done a lot of business with. Um, same with the software and uh, like I said, cannabis, right? I've made really good partnerships through the years. So it's almost, I, I believe, in, in you know many niches, I probably could have a nice contact um, because again, everything that comes to me, knock on wood, is through referrals. And I believe... That has happened for me where I don't have to go out and kind of hunt and cold call. It comes to me warmly because of I've put that out a lot of the years. I've hired over hundreds of people, you know, at this point. And, um, and a lot of it's in goodwill, too. I do still do just referrals without asking for a big placement. If I happen to know someone's looking for a job and then somebody happens to call me in that segment, if I can connect people, that's I still do those kind of things, too. So it's not always just for the big payday. Um, where it's a big, big old search. Um, so, you know, I believe that, you know, in the, doing those referrals or connecting with people to people, it kind of all comes back around. That does seem to be kind of what recruiter's purpose is or making those connections. Sometimes you do it for really cheap and then sometimes you make a big bank on it. Um, and usually it's somewhere in the middle, right? But, um, but again, if you're thinking about it, um, just decide here in September. That's all I'm saying. Whether you want to work with us at Henning Housewives or you just go do it yourself, now's the time because you don't want to be in a few months when you're all sitting around the Thanksgiving dinner table thinking, oh, I wish I would have started that three months ago and then I would have already been knowing what was going on. I mean, remember, we have ladies that start with us and start practicing and sourcing on the jobs I have on my desk. And they actually, you know, sometimes there's beginner's luck. Within a few weeks, their person is in play. And then by Thanksgiving, you know, that person got hired. Then I'm able to break one of those checks to them, <laughs> which is so fun. I've always given um, referral checks when they hit. Um, minimum, it used to be like a thousand bucks just to thank people that didn't know it was coming. And I love that so much fun, especially when you're making a whole lot more 
on those placements. And if it was an easy placement because of a good referral through a source or something that I'm training, um, that's fine, right? But even if you don't make the placement and you just practice but had great candidates in play, just to learn what recruiting is all about and learn how sourcing is really done or how the interviewing and hiring and the questioning um, is also done and how you're helping the client with the scheduling, right? And then at the end, contract negotiation. I mean, I do love that piece. Um, now that I've gotten older, I used to be a little intimidated by it. But there's the things you learn to do from the very get-go to make the close a lot easier because um, you're really week-to-week talking about all those points. So it's not like save the end and then it blows up. And, and that's where we help you with all of that so you're not spinning your wheels. So I know I covered a lot of information just now, but I think it's because I'm all revved up because we're in September. Now's the time to start, right? This is like get the engines ready. Do you want to be a sourcer? Do you want to be a recruiter? Do you want to be a business owner um, in recruiting? And where do you need help? Where are you stuck? What, What aren't you deciding on and why, right? And that's where... I think we can help each other and figure out, okay, just decide and then get going and let's see if we need help and get going weekly. And um, and then before, you know, Thanksgiving, everyone's high-fiving and hopefully some of us have made some good money. Others have just now learned a whole lot that they're going to take into the new year. So then by the new year, you know, you've already got a massive head start. Um, so that is my offering to you. I'm getting started right now to get started with us. Um, and any of you ladies that are trying to get unstuck, you know, get unstuck. We're, we're all there. It doesn't change no matter how I think successful every year. I'm like, okay, what, what's my new plan, right? Because you always want to up your game. So you don't have to do it alone. So I hope that's very helpful. Um, listen, have a great, great September. I really do hear, hope to hear from you. I look forward to seeing those emails and, um, and we'll get things. The, the first official event where uh, week starts next week, the 13th. That'll be week one of our 10-week plan. So if you want to hop in on those calls or get invited to the private podcast, just let us know at hello at Headhunting Housewives. And um, have a great September, ladies. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come join us over at headhuntinghousewives.com. It's completely free to join. We're there to offer you guidance, support, inspiration. And when you're ready to go a little bit deeper, we're starting a mentorship program in 2Q. If that's for you, you have to email me at hello at headhuntinghousewives.com and let me know who you are and how I can help. Again, that's hello at headhuntinghousewives.com and I look forward to seeing you there.